Good evening. And welcome to the regular meeting of the Council of the City of Long Beach on Tuesday, January 16, 2018, at 7 p.m. I'm Roy Hall, Councilor Mandel. Present. Councilor Mandel. Yes. Councilor Moore. Here. Vice President Diamond. Here. President Arama. Here. Let the record indicate the presence of the active city manager, Michael Hackett, and Corporation Council of Long Beach, D.C. And now this move to the flag. Visit longbeachmusicfestival.com for more information. 
And lastly, the Long Beach New York Arts Council will be hosting its rescheduled first Friday event on Friday, January 19th at the Long Beach Hotel with the Anthony CK Group. Also, the Arts Council is looking for board members, so if you are interested and have the necessary qualifications, we encourage you to submit your application. The application is on the city's website. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Acting City Manager. Uh, you touched on the uh, uh, celebration and events of yesterday. Um, we did honor our sanitation workers. Um, looking back uh, 50 years since uh, Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated, uh, being down in Memphis at the Memphis uh, sanitation workers strike. So we did honor our sanitation workers. And uh, just for a little more comprehensive uh, view of what happened yesterday, I'd like to call up our uh, Director of uh, Community Development and uh, Residential Outreach, Mr. Marvin McMoore, uh, and just give us an overview
Absolutely. I forgot to mention, we did. Um, Pastor Melton, who's on my staff, who was with us for Christian Life, um, he administered a survey in December into um, the senior program. We got some feedback. Um, we're working on that feedback. And one of the things that you guys have been pushing mm -hmm. to us to the council, from the council, I've been for a third day at the MLK. Um, you know, because this is really a big opportunity for the seniors to leave their house. And usually, one of the only times they can come to the only time they actually leave. So, we definitely want to continue to increase the programming. But also make sure it's not just having programs, just to have programs to make sure they're quality, that they are you know, actually um, growing from those programs. Thank you. Sure. Any more questions? I just want to um, thank all the members of the committee, as well as you and ASAP um, committee, that planned the event at the MLK Center, which took place yesterday, and you, you brought some information back to the city, and we were able to partner and make sure that it was, and it was a fabulous event that included so many people from the community. So I want to thank you for doing that as well as all of the committee members who took the time and effort to really be part of that event. It was really, really was very special. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Newmar. First public hearing this evening is for a resolution creating waiver of all street parking requirements for premises 917 West Beach Street for a smoothie juice bar. because we need short-term and long-term parking. I'd also like this council to consider um, that there is now, I love the idea of this new business, however, we're now putting more vehicles on our streets and we're gonna have more people circling our residential neighborhoods looking for parking. At the corner of, um, for instance, it's, it's Virginia, correct? Virginia and Beach Street. Um, the acting city manager might be able to answer a little bit of this, but I do believe that that is a, a fairly high crash area. There may have been a couple of fatalities, serious injuries at that intersection over the past decade. We need crosswalks there. We need a no turn on red sign there before we even consider opening a business where there's going to be a high pedestrian and bicycle um, customer base going in. And as far as the deliveries, I wanted to ask him one more question about that because having a restaurant background, I know that there will be deliveries. And I'd like to know what hours these deliveries are going to be from the vendors. Um, I'd also like to know if this business is going to have food delivery. So we're going to have even more vehicles on our streets, circling the block, whatever, looking for parking or double parking while they're waiting for their, you know, the, the packages to come to deliver. So um, what I'm asking here is, um, I don't want to stop this person from getting their parking waiver, um, but I'd like you guys to seriously consider before cramming another. Um, what will definitely be a, a very busy shop in the West End, um, and probably a high traffic shop. Um, consider 
the concept of parking management, consider the concept of planning before giving away parking waivers like your Oprah and parking waiver, parking waiver. Um, this is people, people's lives are at play here. Um, and this is important. And so I would like you for this particular parking waiver to consider what I'm saying, to please consider a no turn on red right there where the um, auto body shop is and to consider putting crosswalks in there. And moving forward on any other parking waivers, consider smarter planning before and consider parking management before giving away parking waivers, especially in the West End. Thank you. You did say no deliveries, delivery services, what I believe you were answering. Is that correct? I believe you were answering product that you were selling. Yeah, as far as the product receiving. The product, the nature of the product I'm selling is a frozen product. It's not really meant to be delivered. Right. And as far as your deliveries that you're going to be getting, do um, you expect many in, in trucks? It, the, the maximum I plan on expecting a truck to be sitting on the street is probably 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. And the delivery is probably twice a month. Twice a month. Yeah. And that's something that you can do in off hours to not affect the traffic. <laughs> Thank you. And I believe that facility lends itself to deliveries on Virginia Avenue, not on Beach Street. There is a back a side door.
Just state your name again. <laughs> safer for uh, the, the sunbathing and bathing public. It also gives us a lot of mobility in and around the beach park. Uh, every day at the end of the day, we use these vehicles when the lifeguards are home to keep people out of the water, so they need to be right down by the tie line, and uh, it's, it's a real safety issue, and uh, there's no way to patrol three miles of beach without a couple of extra vehicles. Questions from the council? Um, I was uh, looking into this and I'm not able to find a Kawasaki ULSX 4x4 SC SC. This is XC SC. I'm just going to know if that is possibly a type of. Or that is a different model that I can't find on the Kawasaki website. I will, I will get that information. And uh, just one other is uh, on the uh, Polaris. Um, the uh, base price on that model is uh, 13300 uh, I went and I kind of loaded it up with 
pretty much anything I can think of that we might need. And I'm having difficulty getting up to 19,000. So I'm just wondering, is this thing outfitted differently somehow that brings the price up that much? Or? The problem is it's a bid project. So we don't get to do competitive buying. We have to take whatever bid is lowest on the final bid. So they, a lot of vendors do know this. And we don't get the benefit of the best price. Absolutely not. Thank you. Maybe the next one. No, I do not. Okay. Anything else from the council? General public? Anybody else? Ms. Volosevich?
That's, yeah. I'm not, can I also go through my thing? Um, and I see that there was only one one bid response here, which is shocking considering how many um, people sell these things, only one person would respond, um, which kind of brings me to a little bit of your point there about the cost, because I did the same thing you did, we share that nerd thing. Um, and yeah, that's not, this isn't the cheapest price that you can get these for. So I'm wondering, can you hold off on voting for this and keep the bid thing open and see if we can get some more responses that are a little more competitive? Um, I don't believe we're in a hurry, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, in a hurry to get these if you had to leave it open for another month because I believe that you can get a better price on these. Um, so we do hope. Okay, yeah, there, I mean, can you leave the bid open until you get a certain the bid's closed. We'd have to Can you reopen it? We'd have to start the process all over again. Then, then start the process all over again. You only got one response. And we, I, I just well, we, do, we reach out and we do follow New York State Board to, you know, uh, to get the different bids. And there may just be one dealer, sh dealer in this local that wanted a bid for it. Then how about you open it even more? Because if you're only getting one response, from all of the dealers out there who sell this, that's pretty insane, and I don't it's think- not, it's, it's common. It, is it really common? Well, I mean, maybe for Long Beach, is this common in other places to one response? Whenever there's only one response for something so common like this, the previous times when you had a bid open for these ATVs, how many people responded, just one? I don't know. So I, I think you should- I'm saying in general, it's common that you only get one response to a government bid because very often, um, businesses don't necessarily want to deal with a government agency. Oh, I can't imagine why. Because it takes a while to get paid. Um, so, I mean, it's common. It's common on things you okay. think you get one of things, you, you get one or two. Okay, well, I'm going to suggest to the whole council that you just maybe put this off, reopen the bid, and hope that you can find a way to open it up more, get it out there in more channels, and try to find more competitive you know, get some more competitive um, uh, bids in there because I'm quite certain someone out there is going to sell you these for a lot less. This, it's, this is our this is our money here that you know you're you're spending. So thank you. We do a very impressive push on the bids. In addition to just putting out a bid, we don't just put it in the local paper that we're looking to buy something. The fact that this is two small vehicles, it doesn't engender a lot of work to put to go through the bid process. Of course, the profit margin isn't so great. Uh, we are buying two free police cars, one for the auxiliary two for the police department at the, at, uh, down the road, and we were able to piggyback off the state contract. Unfortunately, as much as you think this is a very popular item, it's not a popular item for the government because there is no state bid. When we fly cooperatively throughout the state, we always get a much better price. But the fact that the city of Wilmington looked for just two single items, it, it didn't generate a lot of interest, and that's one of the reasons we have some of these problems. Like with the chemicals, we buy so many tons, it was worth the companies that specialize in that chemical, and there's only a few of them, so they can all bid on that very quickly. But uh, vehicles, there's a lot of uh, details that go into them, and they're just not, a lot of vendors are not going to do the work. In addition to going through the whole procurement process and then the delayed payments. Can you answer the rest of the questions? Are these replacements? The yes, question? these are two replacements. Um, if you, on your way home, you go to the end of the diagonal parking on Central Street, and you'll see two rotted out uh, ATVs uh, there that we're looking to get rid of. And Ms. Blanchett, just to touch on something that you brought up, <coughs> on the issue of receiving one bid. Since it is a common response when municipalities put things out for a bid response, um, last week I raised the issue of possibly um, addressing, if we do receive one bid, a mandatory rebid, unless there is an articulated reason from the department head as to an emergency or an urgency. I think what council is looking into that, and something the council is considering. So it doesn't fall on that means it's being removed. Anybody else from the public? Okay, next item. I'm, excuse me, item six is a resolution establishing a standard work day for the elected members of the city council of the city of Long Beach for the purposes of determining 
reporting days work for the New York State and local employees retirement system. Okay, uh, the city council as all uh, civil service workers of sort are entitled to pension credits. Uh, the city council has to log their time, that's why there's no um, value or issue with the uh, newly elected councilman Vendo because she has to establish the law. So based on the logs that the council has put forth, they're allowed to get some pension credit for the time they spend at meetings, civic events and such. And uh, this is why there's different values to each council member's name uh, to get them into the retirement social security system and be fairly compensated. Is there any questions from the council on the last and final item? Any questions from the public? Ms. Blanchett? different 
number of hours that they're working a week, but they all have the same title and position of council person. Can I, can I clarify something? I think that it's not, it's not a regular timesheet in the way that you can envision it, that you come in and you just clock out. There's a period of time when either you were first appointed, for example, mine was for a period of time, this is not in 2016, because I was not in the council then. For a period of time that the state mandates, you keep a log of the things that you do that are related to the council, whether it's council meetings, events that you go to, community meetings, that sort of thing. And then there is a formula, in my understanding, that's taken care of by the comptroller's office that comes up with this figure of the days and the time. That's why each of ours is a little bit different, because they aren't exactly the same at that time. Each of us, and it isn't something that you continuously keep. You keep it for a period of time, is my understanding, and then you submit that. And it's taken care of by the comptroller's office, and they take care of this formula and come up with the, with the number. I don't exactly, it's not the same as a typical, like, office time sheet. For example, Mr. Miles, yes, at the MLK event, a couple of council people left early. So their time would be different than the council people at State Police who show up, but they get to approach the program. So sometimes people have to leave early, sometimes people stay longer. There's conversations that, you know, maybe council business afterwards, that would keep one person there. So there's some events that one council person would not go to, so they wouldn't get credit. And you have to understand something here. You're looking at a very insignificant number. This is a pension credit. This is not a salary. So this goes into a major formula, and by and large, a lot of the council members will never receive enough credits to get a pension at the end of this. But they have every right to clock their hours. It's fair. I agree with that. It's fair. And they do keep their own hours. And I have a lot of faith in this council that they're honest people. So I think that they should be able to keep their own hours. And in addition, I think that's really good. They should be able to keep their own hours. And the controller does do a double check to make sure. And the fact that all the hours are so close, so closely aligned, it makes a lot of sense that they're all keeping similar things. But you are aware that the council person, I remember Mike, went to jail for this exact thing about his pension service and his time. And I understand, but it was about the time being recorded to say that it wasn't. Because unemployment is three days a week, consecutive or more, right? And these are hours sporadically in. So I was like, wow, he's kind of in jail. But how does the system work if he's not working three days a week? But I want to get back to this other thing. Well, that's exactly what the system does work. I'm not sure. I feel like you got a bad deal on that. Because everybody's getting a pension. It works different. Your time is different from apparently everybody else's time. So we shouldn't have looked at it. It shouldn't have been looked at that same way. And I've been through the ringer with the unemployment before and how that works. And I know that people make things up and that it can happen. Mistakes happen. People slip through the cracks. Is there an office for this council to work out of should they want to come in and do something here? I remember that was asked for when you were first appointed as more. And I was wondering, do we yet have an office for any of the five of them to actually sit down and do work if they were to come in and do work? We don't necessarily have our own office. But if you're going to have a meeting, the city manager's office is usually available. OK. I asked for office back in 2016. I was told because the city is going to, in some way, restructure City Hall, that an office would be created for us at that time. Obviously, it's taking longer than what we anticipated. And at that point, that's why I made a request at that time to the former city manager that we would have voicemail so that residents would have access to us at the various numbers. And that's what we have now. But in terms of an actual physical space where residents can come in and see us, we still, at this point, do not have an office space. Well, I think if you're going to have salaries and there's going to be time allotted, there ought to be a place allotted that's not the city manager's space as well, that they can have their own separate space. It's been two years now, and nothing has happened with that. All right. So thank you for your answers, Ms. Lundstedt. Oh, and we do want to give our sanitation workers a visit, not hand clap, all that good stuff. But the snow removal this year was like one of the worst ever.
Anybody else? Mr. Session? Just get your name and address for one
Yes. Item 4 is the resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase various chemicals for the water purification plant from the most responsible bidders. Second. I will. Yes. 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 Yes.
not meeting everybody, but it has not changed. It's the same. It remains the same. Crooked dealing, underhanded dealing, lying, backbiting. And, and what you don't realize that is what you do to one another is going to come back up on you. So I think that really, by right, you ought to do the right thing. I know what your goals and your aims are with reference to the plan for the city. I, I know, because I said I've been here for a long time, and I know how it has been that people, buildings have been burned, a whole lot of crooked things, and it has drove out the underserved, the poor, and the minorities, I'll put it that way. So it's time to stop also being well, I won't use the word prejudice, discriminate, discriminate. The spirit of Trump is in the land, and I know y'all don't like what he said about the president, but he's a liar too. And this is what he's taking place again. You all are young. I'm on my way out into the I really am. Some of you, you have yet years ahead of you. You got your children. Do the right thing. If nobody stands with you, do the right thing. And God will bless you. Ms. Kathy Williams.
They was in an uproar about how could you do this to people coming up out of slavery, becoming responsible people in the end. We don't have a law to stand up for us today. <coughs> we have you the law. We ask you to do what's right. I don't have, we don't have anything against Ms. Nino. She's innocent. I don't know why you as a woman didn't stand up and say this is wrong. Think about that. 
um, implementation and the better nature. And I'm always doing for the greater good for a few. <coughs> the first inhabitants of the city of Long Beach were the Rock The first gentrification occurred on Harrison Street. C Block 277, Change Order 72497. My family home, Section Block, Block. 5991 block 32 or 33. Second justification occurring stop and shop go down um, wall 
five, six months, if you want to get it. I mean, fortunately for me, I have a husband who installs these wonderful things. So I can bring things that are gross like this to the city hall so you guys can see this is what everybody's drinking. So that's that. <laughs> Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Um, it's very clear. Clean water is a human right. And mm -hmm. so um, this is a priority for all of us. And hopefully, I guess the activity manager can be putting information out to make sure that we can address this particular issue because obviously, you're not the only person that's experienced this. There are other residents that have also experienced this. This is not the first year this has happened. This is my time here in 2016. People have come to meetings complaining about water. And so at this point, the, the residents need to answer. So um, it's disgusting. It, it's gross, it, it, right? really is, it really is disgusting. I too have a whole house water filter um, at my house, and it's very similar. Um, we did talk to our DPW commissioner um, last week. He couldn't be here tonight. He has a, a family emergency. Um, but I did want him to come and speak about it. Um, although they do say our water is safe and it's tested and the state regulates it and the state tests everything. I'm having um, actually our water sent to another lab just to Great. I would love to know what the results of that are. Um, but the one problem that we are having, um, which is pretty consistent, which I don't know if that's what's on there, but when you see the brown water is basically rust. Yeah. Um, and what happens is we had a few uh, water main breaks and we had a few water mains that froze. And as it was explained to us, I'm not an expert in this, but it was explained to us by the DPW commissioner, it changes the flow of the water, water going from one direction to the other, which brings up with, which brings up all the sediment, and, and that's where we get all the, all the brown water from, which is disgusting. Yeah. And, and it'll ruin your clothes if you're doing the laundry. Absolutely. And the laundry. I have yeah. 300 bricks. Right. So, right. Right. so we're aware. Um, uh, Councilman Bendo asked about lining the pipes, which is actually um, unreasonable uh, to be able to do that. You're, it's cheaper to actually just start replacing pipes. The good news is in terms of replacing pipes, each year, you know, it's very minimal, but each year when we do road reconstruction, um, not just the road resurfacing, but when we dig up the entire street, we are replacing all the sewer and water mains everywhere. Um, and part of the problem is that we are on a sandbar, as it was explained to me also by the DPW, which doesn't support the pipes, so the pipes all move and jostle around as the sand uh, washes away underneath the pipes. Um, does that change the fact that I don't want my children necessarily drinking that water? No, of course not. Um, but it is it is safe. I have to, I have to say that. It is safe. Um, but I will have the DPW commissioner uh, contact you. I think you have your number on the, on the form, right? I think I saw it there. Um, and to see what we can do going forward besides replacing pipes. That's really the only only option that we have at this point. I mean, at one point they thought the water in Flint was safe, so. I'm sorry? At one point they thought the water in Flint, Michigan was safe. And right, right. Well, we are having a water test. Uh, 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 is what it really is. Um, which does, isn't necessarily dangerous, but it is gross. Um, so I will, I'm going to take your card right here and make sure the DPW Commissioner calls you. Um, but also, um, as Councilwoman Moore, Ask that we start putting more information out to the public. I think we are required to do a public, um, a public analysis of our water from time to year. Yeah, there is a mailing that goes. There is a mailing that does go out, and it has all the breakdown of whatever they find in our water. Each, I'm sorry. May. Each May. Each May. So he said the water report was out each May. If I can, if I can just. Okay. Um, so if it's a concern that each of us share, we each receive a number of, of emails, text messages, whatever it is regarding regarding the water. Um, we've spoken at length with our DPW commissioner in order to see what else can be done in addition to with the process of changing the pipe. And I know this is not the answer that you want to hear, that it's a slow process. Um, but that, along with all the other improvements and infrastructure improvements, are slow and very costly. But in the meantime, we go through the steps that are necessary in, with, from the state as well as local authorities to ensure that the water is safe. I too have the issue. I understand it, and it's not pleasant. But that being said, we hold on. Let me just finish. That being
being said, I think that this is something that the city and the city council, each of us is committed to improving and making sure that whatever can be done is done and as quickly as possible. It's not falling on deaf ears, we're not ignoring it. It's, it's something that we've probably sent emails to speak about on a weekly, if not daily basis. Okay, but the word has been an issue
with the city manager, I think a man or a woman who comes in to become city manager, or even a black woman who comes in to become city manager, they would need to know and have some background about this, so I really think it should be held up. That's my first point. My second is that, Mr. Romo, I keep seeing that you're having fundraisers, and I know you were just elected, so I'm wondering what you fundraise for. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I don't know that this is more a governmental forum, but that's more political, so I, I don't necessarily think that's appropriate, but if you want to talk afterwards, okay, we can discuss I will. my and political fundraising. Because if you are running for another office, then maybe you need to take over this president. Yeah. 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 It's not Lutus, it's not Mania, it's not Pragma. 
It's not a doctrine. The love of God is what passes all understanding. It gives you the place and the opportunity for everyone to afford their rightful place. The young lady came up here with two filters. One, clean and new. Another, tarnished by the corrupted nature by what came through it. And you all agree that the one that had the corrupted nature in it was vile. By your own admission, you today sit here. And unfortunately, I think this, all of this is falling on deaf ears. You are privileged, and you will not even follow your own rules. And you have again denied us our privilege and our right. You say you love her. If I ask you if you love her, you say, yes, I love her. Then you must treat her like you love her. Uh -huh. love her. And the history is ugly. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's okay. I don't need three minutes to say anymore. You know why? Because it's falling on deaf ears. And if I was you, and I'm sure you're a wonderful woman. If you're a wonderful woman, you would even yourself deny this place because it is an to go in the left Position were given out here for jobs, 
All we were able to do was to get that little puncher, the puncher hole in the plastic, <laughs> so that the people could on the beach. Okay, so that's fine. But I just want to know, what is it that she needs to learn? What is it that she needs to learn? I've said here several times, and I hear you say about people are opening businesses and you're discussing about parking spaces. I simply put in a request to see how far it would go. I own a house on East Fulton Street. When 2012, when Sandy hit, people had to go to Hempstead to find some place to live. I asked, could I use my property on the top to become a homeless shelter? You basically told me no, because we don't have any parking spaces. Down in the West End, there's never any parking spaces. Meetings 
regarding transportation. Transportation is a key part of a comprehensive plan, and it's also a civil right. I am requesting that you postpone this meeting until you get your business together up there, until you get your city manager, until you get your city manager together, until you figure out your problems up here with your presidency, and you know, just take a little time on that because this is a very serious document. And when I hear that this might be the last meeting, oh, this will not be the last time you hear from me or you hear from these people. Here their stories. That's very important. 
with me. So I hope you guys do consider it and just see you have a good person on your team. And let's keep it that way. Let's let the community grow with good people like you need to want. Thank you. Thank you. 